The next one is the custom kind of calculator, the projection, the forecasting piece with parameters. From a technical point of view, it's simpler. That's the dynamic comparison, dynamic metric dimension that we saw. It's basically just calculations, but do not ignore it because of its simplicity. It is much more useful. The dynamic parts, these are just user interface. These are just allowing them to do something that you could have been hard, but you could create pages for it. But this is doing something really magical. Magic is this one, not changing titles and dynamic text or things like that. This is what I call magic. This is without any code. In this example, I'm connecting to live data source to the API of a tool and data studio can easily connect to 400, I don't know, different tools and marketing tools. I'm allowing user to enter the values that they want. I'm showing them calculations based on the logic that I hard coded in this report. And it's a custom connected calculator. It's the strategy projection. It's something that, for example, allows you to have a conversation with a client or allows a marketing manager to, to have a conversation with the boss that, okay, we had this number of sessions. What if we enter and we try to get 10,000 more sessions? Let's just take a look at the calculations. So we know that these are coming from a data source. We know that these are parameters that I've defined and I'm getting the values from the user. And we know that these are kind of calculations, but the calculations are easy. This is the number of sessions. This is the adjustment. This is just, I'm adding them together. This is the conversion rate. This is the adjustment. If I adjust it, then I'm applying conversion rate by one plus adjustment to come up with the new conversion rate and et cetera. So this, the new average order value is the same. So there is nothing really complicated about this calculation. But now we can have this live projection forecasting conversation that, okay, we have a budget. We want to spend it on marketing, what happens? And uh, I'm going down and calculating to net profit. Right now, if everything is the same, right? Previous month, we had 88,000 in, in net profit. What if we add 10,000 more users, sessions, right? Now, how much profit we can get if nothing else changes? What if we invest in increasing our e-commerce conversion rate by 20%? What if we try bundling something, different products, and increase average order value by 40%? This is a little bit unrealistic, by 20%, okay? What if we can do something to decrease our cost maybe by in bulk and increase our profit margin by 10%? And for that 1,000, 10,000 new sessions, what would be the cost per acquisition that I expect to pay for those additional traffic? to come to my website, maybe $5 per person. So we know that it was 88,000. Now we know with applying all these changes, the profit that this business can get is $203,000, more than 100,000 more. And now it's it can be the point of a starting a kind of value conversation with your prospect and your client. If they are trying to start a new project, start a new marketing campaign initiative, and you want to assess the value, where is best to put their resources? Is it best for them to focus on e-commerce conversion rate optimization or maybe some bundling and marketing and pricing kind of strategies? Or maybe they need to get more traffic or a combination of all of these. This is really good. And this can be internal. This can be client-facing. This can be used as a lead magnet, as an asset based on the way you want to show data to your clients. Any questions about this? Nope. No, but 